Okay, we'll get back to uh, section 10.1 now. Um, we're talking about uh, methods for solving a quadratic equation. Now, um, in, in all, there's, uh, there's actually four methods that we should know for solving a quadratic. Okay, they are factoring, uh, using the square root property or extracting the square roots, that means the same thing, and then completing the square is the third method, and then the fourth method we'll learn in the next section. Okay. Uh, we've already looked at factoring. By the way, factoring is not something new, like we've done lots of factoring all over the place. Okay? Factoring is always what we should be thinking of first in solving a quadratic, unless we're told the method to use. You know, that's different. But think factoring first if you're not told the method. Um, and then we talked about the square root property in the last video. Okay? Uh, you want to use the square root property Basically, in a situation where you've got an expression that is squared on one side, okay, and you're all set up to like take the square root of both sides to get rid of that power of two. All right, another method that we need to know is, uh, is called the completing the square method. Uh, here's a definition. Completing the square is a method used to solve a quadratic equation by rewriting the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero into this form that you see here. Okay, we'll talk about how to do that, and then once we're in this form, we're going to apply the square root property, you know, we're going to take the square root of both sides. Uh, so we need to know the square root property first before we complete the square, since we're going to be using that property in the process of completing the square. Now this form that I've got here may look kind of weird and complicated, um, but it, it actually is going to make more sense to us in the next section uh, once we talk about the quadratic formula. Okay, uh, There's a connection between the completing the square method and the quadratic formula. I'll comment on that once we get to the next section though. All right, so let's look at some examples of where we are completing the square. Um, in the very first example on this worksheet, uh, we were solving an equation by factoring. Okay, here's 2x squared minus x minus 3 equals 0, and x is equal to 3 halves, and x is equal to negative 1. That factored very nicely for us. Okay, and I've got that same equation written again here, and I've also uh, uh, made a note, refer to problem 1. Okay, I've just done that. Okay, and I've rewritten what we've done there in problem 1. Now, I'm going to show you how to solve this equation again, but by using this, uh, the completing the square method. Okay, now we already know the answers, but we'll, we'll verify that we get those same numbers using this other method. Well, um, to begin completing the square, we need to have a one in front of the x squared term. Right now I've got a two, so I'd wanna begin by dividing both sides by two. Okay, divide the three terms here by two. Um, and the next thing that you want to do is uh, you want to add the constant over to the right. Okay, so I'm going to add 3 halves to the right. Now those two things that I just mentioned, the getting the 1 in front of x squared and bringing the constant to the right, those two things are just the setup for completing the square. Like I haven't done any completing the square yet. Okay, but I am all set up to do that now. How we actually complete the square is we want to take half of the number in front of x squared and we want to add that new number to both sides. Okay, I'll mention that again. We want half of the number in front of x squared and we're going to add that new number to both sides. All right, so for this problem I've got a negative one half in front of x. I want half of that number which is negative one-fourth. I gotta fix that in the notes here, sorry about that. This should be a negative one-fourth squared. Negative one-fourth squared is one-sixteenth. Okay, so one-sixteenth is gonna be the number that I'll add to both sides on the next line. Be sure that you add that number to both sides. I'll have students sometimes mess this up and they've only got it added to one side. Don't do that. Now the reason for doing that, because this seems kind of like a strange thing to do, but the reason for it is because the left side will always factor 
and the factors will always be the same. Okay, now I'm going to have x and x. The middle term is a negative, the last term is a positive. The only way for that to happen is if the signs go minus minus. Right? Negative times negative is positive. Negative plus negative is negative in the middle. And uh, if I use one fourth, x minus one fourth times x minus one fourth should get me the line right above here, x squared minus one half x plus one sixteenth. Now, as a hint, when you're getting to the point in the completing the square process where you're going to factor, I mentioned that the factors are always going to be the same, and it will actually be the number that you're squaring in the previous line there. That will always happen. So because I'm squaring a negative one-fourth to get this one-sixteenth, I'm going to have minus one-fourth and the two factors. Okay, now that's a handy thing to know because sometimes in this method we work with fractions. That's okay. That shouldn't bother us at all. Okay, we should be able to get the factors instantaneously by just taking a look at the number that we were squaring in the previous line there. Okay? X minus one fourth times X minus one fourth is X minus one fourth squared. And then on the right, I'll need to get the uh, common denominator here, which is uh, 16. Three halves, that's the same as 24 over 16. Plus 1 16th, that'd be 25 over 16. Now at this point, I'm ready to take the square root of both sides. Okay, and so I've done that. The square root of x minus 1 4th squared would be x minus 1 4th. Uh, plus or minus, don't forget about that, the square root of 25 16 Okay, um, add 1 4th to both sides since we're solving for x. And the square root of 25 is 5, the square root of 16 is 4. So if I take 1 fourth plus 5 fourths, that would give me 6 fourths, or 3 over 2 if I reduce. And then 1 fourth minus 5 fourths is negative 4 over 4, or negative 1. Okay, so the two answers here are x equal 3 halves and x equal negative 1. Now I already knew that because this equation factored from the get-go, right? Um, so this would be how we'd get the answers by using the completing the square method. Perhaps the next question that you might have is, why in the world would I ever do the problem like this using completing the square when I could just get the answers in two lines of work by factoring? Okay, so the problem that I just showed you here is not a great example for showing you um, uh, why we complete the square. It's a great example to show you how to complete the square. Okay, obviously, if, if I were given the choice to solve, like I wouldn't com use this method, like I just factor, right? I can get the answer in, you know, five seconds. Um, so why we complete the square is not for situations where we can easily factor, okay? But it's for situations where we can't see the factors easily, okay? Um, so let's take a look at problem five, which is another example here. And uh, I want to solve x squared minus 5x minus 8 equals 0 by using completing the square. By the way, this equation will not factor nicely for us. Okay, so at this point, my only option is to use the completing the square process. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, begin that. Now, I've already got a 1 in front of x squared. The next thing would be to bring the constant over to the right. Okay, so add 8 to both sides. Now I'm all set up to complete the square now. I need to take half of the number in front of x squared, and I'm going to add that new number to both sides. Okay, so for this problem, there's a negative 5 in front of x. I want half of that number squared. Negative 5 halves squared, uh, negative 5 squared is 25, 2 squared is 4. So 25 fourths would be the number that I would add to both sides on the next line here. Okay, now why I'm doing that, again, is because on the left, this is, the left side will always factor and the factors will always be the same. Uh, I can get the factors instantaneously 
I know right away it's going to factor as x minus 5 halves times x minus 5 halves, or x minus 5 halves squared. The reason why I know that right away is because, remember, it's always going to include the number that you're squaring in the previous line. So because I was squaring a negative 5 halves to get this 25 fourths, I'm going to have minus 5 halves in the two factors. That will always happen. Okay, so it's like what I was saying before about working with fractions, so what? You know, we, we can instantaneously get the factors by just looking at the number that we were squaring in the previous line. On the uh, right, 8 plus 25 fourths, okay, I'm going to have to get my common denominator. 8 is the same as 32 over 4. 32 over 4 plus 25 over 4 would be 57 over 4. And now I'm ready to take the square root of both sides to get rid of the power of 2. So I've done that. x minus 5 halves would be equal to plus or minus the square root of 57 over 4. Uh, if I split this radical, I know the square root of 4 is 2. Also, I'm going to add 5 halves to both sides. So I'm looking at x equal 5 halves plus or minus the square root of 57 over 2. 2 is my common denominator, so I can combine this to a single fraction with the common denominator being 2. Uh, my two solutions then would be 5 plus the square root of 57 all over 2, and then 5 minus the square root of 57 all over 2. And again, I'm using this plus minus condensed version. Okay, now, um, by the way, in this problem, I mentioned that this would not factor easily for us. Okay, the reason why we would not easily see the factors is because these nasty numbers here are the factors. Now, when factoring, you know, there's guessing and checking, but you're, you're, you're using counting number of values and then placing the signs. Like, you're not checking numbers like these in, in arranging the factors. Okay, so a factoring situation for something like this would not be anything that any, anybody would ever think of uh, because it doesn't factor nicely. Okay, um, so think of the completing the square method as like your next best option if you've ruled out factoring. Uh, at least at this point, it's your next best option. Okay, uh, let's try another one. Part, problem six, uh, solve by completing the square. So again, the first thing is that you always want to get a one in front of x squared. Here I've got a two, and so I'm going to have to divide uh, throughout these three parts here by two. And uh, now in doing that, you sometimes create fractions at the beginning. That, that's, that's okay, you, that still has to be step one, okay? I see sometimes where students w won't get a 1 in front of the x squared term, like they'll go right into half of the number in front of x squared. Don't do that. Okay, that will lead to the wrong answer because you weren't set up to complete the square yet. Okay, um, so we need a 1 in front of x squared. We've got that. Okay, and uh, bring the constant over to the right. So this line here uh, is where I'm now already set up to complete the square. All right, I need half of the number in front of x squared. Half of negative 3 halves is negative 3 fourths. And by the way, when I say half of the number, more specifically, I mean 1 half times the number. So if I take 1 half times negative 3 halves, that gives me negative 3 fourths. Uh, be sure that you square that number. I'll, I'll see students sometimes not square the number. That, that won't lead to the right answer also. Uh, negative 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, so 9 sixteenths is going to be the number that I'll need to add to both sides in the next line. Uh, I've got that. And on the left, uh, it should factor nicely. The factors are going to be the same, and we can get the factors instantaneously. It's going to be x minus 3 fourths times x minus 3 fourths, or x minus 3 fourths squared is what I've got written there. I know I can get that right away because uh, I'm squaring negative 3 fourths to get this 9 sixteenths. Right? So because I'm squaring a negative 3 fourths, I know I'm going to have minus 3 fourths in the two factors. It's like I don't even have to think of it, about it. Um, on the right, okay, 1 half, that's the same as 8 over 16. 8 over 16 plus 9 over 16 is 17 over 16. And, and uh, the next thing then would be to take the square root of both sides. Uh, be sure to tack on the plus minus there. And then you're, now you're going to add 3 fourths, so that way x is all alone. 
uh, you can split this radical, square root of 17 over the square root of 16 is 4, right? So now I've got my common denominator and I can write this as a single fraction. Okay, 3 plus or minus root 17 all over 4 would be my two answers for this equation, the two solutions. And again, this would be another um, great example to show you um, uh, why we have completing the square, right? Uh, this, uh, this equation wouldn't factor nicely no matter what we do with the arrangement of the numbers and the guessing and the checking, because these nasty numbers are the factors. All right, we'll take a look at one more here. Uh, problem seven, uh, solved by completing the square, okay, and uh, uh, of course, the first thing is to uh, divide by 3, so we get a 1 in front of the x squared term. Um, and then uh, you'll bring the constant over to the right. Okay, so now I'm at this point, and now I'm ready to take half of the number in front of x squared. Um, half of 10 thirds, well, half of 10 is 5. So half of 10 thirds would be 5 thirds. And I'm supposed to square 5 thirds. 5 squared is 25. 3 squared is 9. So 25 over 9, that's going to be the number that I'll add to both sides in the next line there. The left side is always going to factor. The factors will be the same. Because I'm squaring a 5 thirds to get this 25 ninths, I know I'm going to have x plus 5 thirds times x plus 5 thirds, or x plus 5 thirds squared. That means the same thing. Uh, on the right, negative 3, that's the same as negative 27 over 9. Negative 27 over 9 plus 25 over 9 would be negative 2 over 9. And then I want to take the square root of both sides. Um, I'll get rid of the power of 2, make sure that you get the plus minus there, okay? And then uh, we want x all alone, so you'll subtract 5 thirds from both sides. Um, I can split this radical. I know the square root of 9 is 3, right? The square root of negative 2, okay, that's going to be i root 2 when I write that in imaginary form. So I'm going to have imaginary solutions here. Uh, when I write this as a single fraction, negative 5 plus or minus i root 2 all over 3 would be my two answers. Okay, and uh, again, I've, I've already mentioned, you know, just uh, whenever you have a negative underneath the square root sign, just continue solving and give the imaginary solutions there. Okay. All right. Uh, so we're done with section 10.1. Um, here's the homework problems that are on page uh, 780.